Hello, my name is Florin and I'm a developer advocate at JetBrains. Today I'm going to give you an overview of Goland, our cross-platform ID designed specifically for Go developers. We can create a new project in a few different ways, and we have options such as creating a new project from scratch, creating a project from existing sources, or by importing it from existing version control systems. Let's use the version control option and import our project. Let's clone our project in the projects directory. When we open the project, the IDE detects that the project is a Go modules enabled project and asks us if we want to enable this integration. After enabling it, the IDE will download and index the relevant dependencies of the project. We can start exploring the project by just typing the various files or directory names inside the project view window or by using the navigate to file feature. We can use the quick definition feature to learn about the various elements in our code, such as the osgetenv function. Alternatively, we can preview the definition using the quick definition feature. Navigating to files can be done using the search everywhere functionality as well. You can open this up by pressing shift twice and then start typing the file name that you want. Search everywhere also helps us find type definitions, symbols, or actions that can be performed by the ID, making this the universal search hub of the ID. Opening the core.go file displays a rather large file containing many type definitions and other identifiers such as functions or meta definitions. To get a quick overview of the file, we can invoke the file structure functionality to take a look at all of them at once. Typing inside the list can limit the number of results that show up and we can use this feature just about everywhere in the interface where we see a list of items. If we navigate to the thread type, then you'll notice that additional icons on the left side of the editor are being displayed. These help us navigate to the interface that the type implements or back from the interface to all the types that implement it. We can also navigate from single methods to all the interfaces that match those methods and vice versa. Navigation to the definition place can also be done with navigate to definition function and then going back works as it would with your browser shortcuts. Alternatively, we can invoke the show usages feature to take us to any places that our identifiers are used in the code. Going back to the main file, we can see that osetenv is colored a bit differently than the other elements in the file. This is because the IDE provides real-time code analysis for our code to avoid errors even before the compilation step is done. We can hover over the error or place the cursor on it to get more details about a specific issue. To make us generally productive, Goland also suggests how to fix any potential issues it finds using the alt enter shortcut and then select any potential fixes that may apply to our code. Let's use the introduced local variable intention to handle the return values of the function. Next we need to handle the error and we can do so by using a special kind of completion called postfix completion. Postfix completion allows us to add template code around an expression we just typed. We can invoke the rename refactoring to safely rename symbols across our code. We can also use more advanced refactoring options such as extracting code into a new function or method or even changing the signature of a function or method by adding or removing parameters and return values. When we are ready with our changes, we can run tests with coverage to see what impact they had over our existing code base. We can also use the automatic test running feature to help us achieve a more TDD oriented workflow. In case our tests have issues or we want to explore how they work by navigating the code as it executes, we can use the built-in debugger to launch either a test or the whole application and observe it. If all the tests are running OK and we are happy with the results, we can then commit our changes. To do so, let's use the built-in VCS function support and go to VCS commit. We can see a list of changed files, review the file changes or even partially commit a file. Besides that, we can run the GoFMT before committing the file to ensure that our files are compliant with the Go formatting standard, run inspections on them to ensure that our files don't contain any issues, or even run the to-do checkers in order to make sure that we don't have any to-do left in our code. Say we want to open another project and perform some changes to it quickly. We can do so by using the list of recent projects and select our project. Let's choose the attached existing project feature in order to open the project side by side with the current one. This allows us not to open an extra ID window, thus having everything in one place. The project contains a mix of HTML, JavaScript and Go templates as it's a web server. It also connects to a database to receive information that it needs to display. For this, we can use the Docker support plugin to launch our development database copy. We can run queries straight from the ID and we can benefit from coding assistance for our queries even if they are embedded in the Go code itself. 
We can edit or navigate the JavaScript or TypeScript parts with the same features and functionality that we came to expect from other JetBrains IDE, such as WebStorm or IntelliJ IDEA Ultimate. Besides the previously mentioned Docker support, Golang also supports Kubernetes or Terraform in order to help us work in a varied range of environments. You can also install additional plugins via the plugin section to further extend the IDE functionality with additional features such as TeamCity support for CI/CD integration, AngularJS, React, or more. We had a brief overview of the IDE along with some of the plugins and functionality it has. To learn more about our features as well as the licensing and pricing options, please visit our website or get in touch with us on our social media channels or the issue tracker.